Hey everybody, it's Jay Woods here, and the huge Nintendo Switch event in Japan just ended. I'm making this video as sort of a wrap-up of the news, if you're in the many time zones where it wasn't really optimal to watch this thing extremely late at night or extremely early in the morning, or in general, if you just want to hear my thoughts on all things Nintendo Switch. Let's dive in! The first thing announced was the date and price. Nintendo Switch is coming March 3rd, 2017 in most regions, which is incredibly soon. Its debut price point is at $299, which is pretty good. In general, I think this is a solid price point. It's not the dream $250 that some people were circulating, but it's pretty good. It's competitive with the other systems that are out there, and overall, I think it's a decent price for what the console offers, at least so far. There was a brief conversation on what online would be, but it just felt kind of like buzzwords to me without any real information. They said that it would be an online service that allows you to have parties and talk with your friends. There would be some kind of smart device integration in order to create that. They said it would have a free trial as soon as the system started, and then would become a paid system in the fall. Especially because they are considering a paid online system like all the other major competitors in console gaming right now. I really hope this is good, but in general it does seem like something they're focusing on, so I really hope that when they do drop more info that it'll be good. They also said that region locking is, in general, not going to be applied to the Nintendo Switch. I didn't really like the specific wording that they used here. They could have just said it's not going to be here whatsoever. I think it was sort of just a cover your basis thing. But overall, I'm pretty happy to see this. We've had Nintendo consoles without region locking in the past. They've been great. It really sucked when we lost that all of a sudden. So I'm glad that we're at least back to that point. The battery life was listed at two and a half to six and a half hours battery life. That's uh, actually a pretty big range, and I'm not 100% sure where that's going to leave us. I assume when you're doing heavy gameplay, it's going to be closer to that 2.5 side, which is somewhat comparable with what you see in the 3DS units. It's not great, but you can play it while it's still charging and plugged in. It's a pretty common charger cable. Uh, I think it'll be alright, but I do wish it was a little bit longer. Or, like with the Wii U gamepad, if you could swap the battery out with some other kind of stronger battery down the line. A big personal thing that I really liked is that there's 8 system local wireless play. They are really pushing that this system does have portable capabilities. And while I don't know how quickly you're going to be able to find 8 total people who have this system, brought it out and want to do some local play, I love being able to play a video game in front of a room full of a ton of other people, and I'm glad that they're at least going to have the ability to do that with this system. They then moved to the Joy-Con controllers and a lot more information around them. I will say that the Joy-Con grip controller configuration does look a little small for my taste, but separately, I love that you can hold each controller in each hand without being tethered through some kind of cord. You can just chill and play that way. I imagine that this will be the way I'm playing on the Nintendo Switch the most, but I'll have to see soon which one actually suits me the best. As far as the controllers themselves, they are packed with a lot of technology that I didn't even know existed. For example, the right one can read Amiibo, and there's a button on the left one that allows you to capture screenshots, and they said eventually to be able to capture video, similar to that share button that you see on the PS4. They also have accelerometers, and there's motion sensors as well, so they will have motion-capable play of some kind. They also have some kind of camera sensor that allows you to see different hand motions in front of the controllers, there was also a feature that they described as HD Rumble, which gives you this ultra-realistic sense of feel. I'm a big fan of Rumble, it's often underutilized, and I like it when it's done really well. And next up is the most important thing, the games. I might be missing a couple here or there, I know they've been dropping individual trailers that weren't inside of the big event, and there was also a bunch of games that were just rapid fire thrown at us inside of a big trailer at the end, but I'm going to talk about most of the major ones that they showed. The first was the party game 1-2 Switch, full of a bunch of casual mini-games that you can do with the Switch controllers, showing off the motion sensors, showing off the ability to play without even necessarily looking at a screen, and overall I think this is just their gateway game to get casual audiences interested in the technology itself. I can't say this game interests me a ton, but I do hope that it provides the kind of tool needed to show new players what this system can do. Next up was a fighting game that looked like an extremely enhanced version of the Wii Sports boxing minigame called ARMS. This game had two players running around playing very over-the-top characters, throwing giant spring-powered punches at each other at a distance. I'd have to see more about this title to form a real opinion on it, but at first glance it did look more like a tech demo than a full-fledged piece of software that I would buy. They said this one would be releasing in the spring. 
Then came the first major announcement of the show, Splatoon 2, full of new maps, there's really cool dual guns, jetpacks, crazy new specials. There's a lot of content here that I want to go back and dissect at some point, but overall, I'm really excited. You guys know how much I love Splatoon, and if you give us more ways to play this game, especially with a solid multiplayer lobby, then I'm definitely in. This one was slated for release in the summer. Then came my personal number one game of this show, the one I'm most interested in, and that's Super Mario Odyssey. It had tons of unique worlds, uh, humans, cities, abstract cooking worlds, a uh, pimp Bowser, there was a sentient hat that you can use, you can throw it out, use it as a platform to jump. It just looked beautiful, fluid, and overall, the kind of Mario game that I've been waiting for for a long time. I love Mario Galaxy, but I think my personal favorite 3D Mario games were Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario 64, because they gave you big, flat worlds that you could explore in sort of a sandboxy style, where you could jump from one world to the other at your own leisure. This game looked great, it had a ton of movement options, things I haven't seen in Mario games before, and overall, I am totally sold on it. Unfortunately, it's coming out in the holiday season, so yet another game that won't quite be there in the launch window, but should come around eventually. After Odyssey, there were a lot of JRPGs announced, such as Xenoblade 2. I gotta admit, this was a short teaser trailer, the frame rate did not look great on this one, but frame rate aside, I've loved the past Xenoblade games, so I'm interested. There was also Fire Emblem Warriors. I love what they did with Hyrule Warriors. I love Fire Emblem. I love Dynasty Warriors. If they can do what they did with Hyrule Warriors again and just give you that Fire Emblem flair, this should be fantastic. There's already a ton of weapons and an insane amount of characters. The game just writes itself. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There was also the interesting Square Enix Octopath Traveler, which gave me a sort of Bravely Default vibe, where the graphics definitely weren't the main focus. In fact, they looked like 8-bit sprites, but also combined with dynamic lighting. In the same vein, there was also a really short teaser for the next Shin Megami Tensei game from Atlas. Really no actual stuff of substance, just more, hey, we're making the game, but I love the series, so I'm happy to see more. There was a brief segment for third-party support, although it was pretty small. Sega just said, hey, we're making something. Bethesda said, hey, we're making Skyrim, which we've known since the original trailer. Suda51 did come on board and say he's doing something with Travis Touchdown. Probably no more Heroes 3, but he didn't really have anything concrete to say, or at least we didn't hear anything concrete because it seemed like the translator was actually having a lot of trouble with him at this moment. We also heard some words from EA and a FIFA game that they're working on for the Switch. It didn't specifically say that it was a part of their main FIFA line, so it seemed like something dedicated to the Switch. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. FIFA is one of the most popular third-party games in the world, so it is good that we're seeing some kind of representation on the Switch, but I know most people who play FIFA, they're going to want to play the main series FIFA over and over and over again. That's what you do. They actually didn't really touch on it in the main event at all, but after the event ended, there was even a separate trailer for one of these upgraded Wii U titles that a lot of people have been speculating on, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. In this upgraded version of Mario Kart 8, we saw a few new racers, most notably the Splatoon Inklings, a Splatoon course, a lot of different items, and a lot of focus on a brand new battle mode. I would say the only thing I disliked about Mario Kart 8 was the fact that its battle mode was garbage, so add that in and this might be the most perfect Mario Kart ever. And finally, speaking of Wii U ports, they closed the show just about how you would expect with The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. They had a big, epic trailer that actually focused a little bit more on story elements and cutscenes than gameplay, and I really, really liked it. It was intense, mostly due to the fact that they actually relied on voice acting in this game. We got a couple hints in the story, a lot of really tense, dramatic moments, uh, stuff that actually made me want to learn more about this world. There's just so much to unpack here beyond the voices. Gorons, uh, other races that I don't think we've seen before, new lands, it seemed like a hinted transformation at the end that really made me think about Princess Mononoke. Overall, I just thought it was great. Probably not surprising a lot of people, this will be a launch title for the Nintendo Switch. I'm incredibly excited for it, but I wouldn't say that it's a Switch seller for me, because it's going to be on the Wii U, and I've played it on the Wii U, and it was developed on the Wii U. Altogether, it was a really big, epic presentation. I enjoyed a lot of it. The tech looks incredibly cool. There's a lot more of the Joy-Con controllers that I ever knew was there, and I really just want to get my hands on the tech. Unfortunately, my biggest question about the tech, and the one that was the most unanswered, is are they going to deliver by using this technology to give us great games that you can't get anywhere else? A lot of the games that I saw did look very cool. Like I said, I'm incredibly excited for things like Splatoon 2, Breath of the Wild, 
and especially the new Mario game, which looked downright fantastic. But a lot of these games aren't launch titles. In fact, I think the only launch titles that we saw from this presentation itself were the 1-2 Switch game and Breath of the Wild. And that's it. I think for most hardcore Nintendo fans, that's going to be the big question. Is having the Nintendo Switch and playing Breath of the Wild going to be enough to hold you over into the later months, once you get into that launch window, to see some more properties that Nintendo's been working on? All things said and done, I do have an exciting announcement to add on top of this. Nintendo was kind enough to fly me in to the New York Switch event that they're doing right now. In fact, by the time you're watching this video, I'll probably have already played and demoed the Nintendo Switch and whatever games they have out on their show floor. I don't know what kind of capture limits they're going to have and which games are going to be able to be recorded, but I do hope that by the time you see this video, you'll be able to click right here to go to a playlist to see some of the various different things I was able to play on the Nintendo Switch to see a more hands-on experience and get some more of my thoughts there. I am so excited to see where this new Nintendo console season takes us. I'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo content.